Good morning, the 10 of you. <laughs> Thank you for waking up earlier. Uh, we are going to talk here about the two Google contests. Debian is participating. Maybe you all of know uh, the Google Summer of Code. Sylvester, um, well, Silvestre <laughs> and Arthur are going to talk about the Google Summer of Code. Uh, I am going to talk first about the Google Coding. That is a, a contest that Debian was participating this Christmas. It was a bit different to the Google Summer of Code in the sense that we have a, sec a high, high school student or secondary student. Pretty much it was between 13 and 18 years old. And we had a bunch of contributors to Debian who were like 13 years old. We watched, I found that amazing. The contest was a uh, evolved version of something else that Google uh, tried one or two years ago, in case you, you know it. Besides the, no the name, the contest was about doing a lot of more things that use code. I mean, most of the Debian tasks, as you will see later, were related to QA, documentation, translation, and so on. It was very, very, very small. It was only 20, 20 mentoring um, organizations. And it was also lasting a lot of less time than, than the Google Summer of Code. It was only seven weeks. So basically how it worked, it was very different to the, to the Google Summer of Code. Basically all the mentoring organizations create a list with all the tasks that the students could, could do. The students were claiming the task, reading the instruction, not always. Um, they were um, delivering the result of, the, of their job. Then the mentors of, the, of, every, of every project were looking at what the students did. In some cases, the work was perfect, task done. In other cases, the, the students need a little bit more of time for completing the task. And in another cases, the student was unable to do the task. So basically, um, um, in most of the cases, I have to say that in Debian, the students were unable to do the task. They were very underestimating the job. But when the students managed to do the task, the, the quality of their job was very, very good. For example, you can see that the tasks in Debian were very, very simple, except in one case. That was the fix a DPG bug. That actually, a student did that. Um, we, we end with a lot of man page, uh, a couple of QA Ulua that made into the archive, several translations. Um, most of the tasks, if you think about that, is what a contributor can do in one or two hours. But for most of the students, it usually took one afternoon or maybe two. If you are curious, when, when the project ended, I blog and I put all the, all the tasks that have been done. So what the students got? Uh, basically, most of the students were doing that because the, the t-shirt, when a student does a t-shirt, they get uh, one from, the, from Google. That for students seems to be very cool. And when they did three, three tasks, they got uh, some kind of check of $100. $100. Also, some students got to, to know how to start contributing to, to the different Debian, uh, Debian, no, free software projects. In our case, Debian. What did we got? Well, we got about 30 students that managed to complete at least one task. And in the end, we got 39 tasks. The list is on the link I gave previously. Those are the, uh, of the 30 students, two students are still contributing to Debian. One of them is very, very active to the point that uh, I started sponsoring him and he had to look for somebody else because I didn't have time for him. It was like every, every day one package. He's maintaining right now 13 packages. And so basically he has been adopting a package every, every two months. Yeah, sorry. Every month he has been adopting two packages. Uh, also, there is something that we told in Debian from time to time that is having some kind of mentoring scheme. And some people mention, mention the having a small task so contributors can, can start helping. In this case, we, we try that scheme. But uh, the results were good, but I don't know if they are applicable to all Debian because we have very, very little number of mentors. So after telling all this, how you can help? Well, 
we really need we really need mentors for the next edition. And this year we only were like active, like four or five peoples, and we have a lot of students. If you don't have tasks and mentors in the first week, students uh, go to another project and they never come back. The involvement is very, very low if you compare, for example, with a, with a Google Summer of Code that you need to stay all the summer. Basically, if you have uh, one week and can add two or three, or three tasks, it's quite fine. We also need people with administering the, the project side because sometimes a mentor disappears or a student has a problem and somebody else that is not a mentor can help him or help her. Um, also, the most important thing is that students don't have a lot of patience. Sometimes they have a problem and they have help now. Um, maybe maybe wait, making them to wait, I don't know, one day is fine, but when they have to wait two days, they go move to some, something else. What happened with, with small kids? Okay, this was everything about the, the Google coding. Um, if this year is held again, I am expecting that. It will be probably starting around November or December, and it will end in the first week of, of January. So if, when you see the, uh, the, 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 the announcement in Debian, I hope you all join. Thank you. Now, Sylvester and Arthur are going to talk about the Google Summer of Code. Good morning, everyone. Oh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so this has been the sixth year we've been participating in the Google Sum of Code, and every year brings something new. So if you've already been to this talk this year or this year before, uh, some of it is going to, seem to be the same, some of it is going to be different. So I'm going to remind you still some of the goals of the program. Uh, the idea is to get more open source code created and released. Uh, the goal of Google is to inspire young developers to begin participating in open source mostly. Also, we also get students that are already involved in various open source programs. And for, from the point of view of the open source project, it's a way to identify and bring in new developers. And for the students, it's a way mostly for many students to be able to do something that is remotely related to what they're studying. Uh, the idea is to flip bits, not burgers. And it's also something very interesting because it gives students a f the first exposure to real-world software development uh, with many things that are specific to, open, to the open source world, but that already also exist in the general development world, such as the distributed development, software licensing, and how to properly write on a mailing list. Uh, so Sylvester is going to explain to you how the program actually works. So basically, uh, Google, they've got a lot of money, so they don't know what to do with it, so they are going to share some of them with us through the Google Summer of Code project. So basically, Google is uh, funding some uh, project like us, and um, so they are selecting the organization. It's basically, uh, you will see the schedule after that, but they are selecting the, the organization in doing math, and uh, after that, the organization, they have to start to uh, propose some project and select and ask some new mentor to come in the team. So Google is going to uh, fund all the students and the, um, the mentor. So the, every student is getting 5,000 US dollars and each mentor 500. The mentor, it depends on the organization, is keeping the money or leaving it into the organization. So here is some uh, figure about the so, so this year, Google Summer of Code. So as you can see, um, more students than last year have been funded. Last year, it was something like 1,000 students. And they also increased the number of organizations. So now we have uh, 1,115 students for 175 organizations, which is uh, something like 30% more organizations than last year. Uh, a lot of students submitted a proposal, so as you can see that uh, about only 20% of the project are accepted. I'm not taking into account the duplicate proposal, but still, it's a lot of proposals. And uh, a lot, as you can see, pretty much 
we, a few mentors are managing two projects. And the budget is quite important, $7.2 billion, uh, million dollar, not billion. Uh, about us, so this year we had nine students, uh, they all passed midterm. Uh, we had uh, 30 proposals submitted, which is normal for Debian. It is not something which is different from the last year. Uh, we have also 30 uh, usually Debian developers who are registered on the interface, so that means that many people in Debian are interested by that, or at least looking at the project and so on. And uh, we had um, only 20 uh, subjects su su uh, suggested on the, w on the wiki. So I hope next year we'll be able to put more subjects and prepare things before, because it has been a bit hard to get all the subjects in the right time and in the right condition for the Google Summer of Code. So right now I'm going to present to you the, the various projects which has been selected and uh, managed during the, this few months. So the first one is uh, managed by Wookie, who is a mentor, this one, and the student is Gustavo Prado Alkim. Oh, right on time. <laughs> uh, Gustavo is designing a modern automat packages build system for the QA multi-arch area. Uh, I won't go into the detail. If you want more information, ask Wookie or the student. He will give you all the information. So the, the two next ones are mentored by Michael Vogt. Uh, it is about APT and DPKG. So uh, the first one, the, no, the second one, the Delta APT native packaging is to improve the user experience of APT. And the second is uh, changing the ordering of the lib APT for unpackaging and configuration and so on. So the, <coughs> the fourth is uh, mentored by Steve Lagazek. Uh, uh, about DPKG declarative diversion. So uh, this one is uh, to replace the DPKG divert command with a new control and the declarative system. So uh, I won't go into the detail of this one. If you want to have more information about the one uh, mentor by Matt and Stefano uh, of Nathan Handler project, uh, you will have a look to the video. Stefano made a presentation of 45 minutes on this, so you will find everything you need. But basically, it is to manage the, the patches coming from derivative and all the program related to derivative distribution. About the next one. Uh, it is tomorrow, here at, the, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it is mentored by, by Tom, who is in the room, and myself, and the student is the guy who is in charge of the camera over there. So it is basically, uh, just a, quick, a few words, it's basically is when you are downloading the Java Virtual Machine, it's a huge package with everything you don't need inside. So basically you split it into various modules and you just take whatever you need. So it is a very interesting project, but obviously because I'm one of the mentors. <coughs> uh, the next project is a Python build for Python extension packaging. So it is mentored by Pyot, who is in this room. I won't say his family name to spell it badly. Uh, the student is Metsukan Kurt. Uh, it's about uh, creating a, a tool to build Python extension for all Python versions supported by Debian. And uh, the last one, we are going also to have a presentation today at 2 o'clock in the round room, uh, managed by Andrea Steele uh, and developed by Sukir Singh. Sorry about your name. He's also in the room. It's about how to measure the activity into a Debian team. So, uh, and the last one is uh, mentored by Stefan Muller. Um, the, and the student is Rudy Godi, Godoy. And it's the goal of this project is to enable developers to easily use computers cluster, such as Eucalypse or OpenStack. So now, uh, Arthur is going to tell you more about how to participate to the Google Summer of Code. This year, we, we would like to highlight how to participate to the project, what we are expecting, and how we are expecting things to come, and what we need from you if you want to be a, become a, a Google Summer of Code mentor. It says, but we know. <laughs> I have to speak louder. Uh, 
So how to participate? Because we're only admins, and we're not doing most of the work. You're doing the most of the work. Uh, where you, you can be a student or a developer. So when I did this talk at, the, at uh, FOSDEM, I usually talk a lot about what's Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. So uh, at uh, at first time I talk a lot about what students are expected to do, uh, which is very cool because usually the room is completely packed with students for some reason. Uh, but we are DevConf, and most of you are developers, and we need you to help us mentor students and. Uh, you have many questions, and we have many things that we'd like to tell you about it. Uh, so the, most, the question I get the most often is, what exactly is a good JSOC project anyway? Uh, like, I have a bunch of ideas, and I don't know what really is relevant to, just to the JSOC. Uh, we have several criteria to accept uh, projects and to see what projects is really good for us. The one uh, that the first test is the try to replace Debian by Fedora in the proposal. Does it still make sense? If it still makes sense, probably it's not a project that is relevant, relevant to Debian in particular. And this is a test where many projects proposed by students fail because they send the exact same proposal to every single Linux distribution they hear about. Uh, we're here to do projects that benefit Debian, that uh, exploit the particularities of Debian, that work on the very specific infrastructure of Debian. So we don't really want to do GSOC projects uh, where the real focus is not on Debian. The second most important thing is the time scope. Is a project going to fit into months? It shouldn't be too short. It shouldn't be too long. Uh, a summer is supposedly three months, but you have to take into account that the student is going to take three weeks to figure out where everything is and be able to ramp up to a development speed where it can actually get things down. So that takes a few weeks of time. And then at the end, there's all kind of wrapping up things and preparing a release, hopefully. And that also takes our time from the summer. So you have these two months during in the middle of the summer where you need to get everything done and ready. And at the end, we want to see something released within Debian. So that's the time scope. The other focus is the Debian focus. Whose work does a student's project replace? Uh, many times we have like packaging pro packaging projects f usually fail this because it's replacing the work of one single DD when it's a DD and so most of the time it's subjects that really are not really relevant to to Debian it's more upstream work when the work that is replaced by the student is supposed to be done by upstream then it shouldn't be our job either. So this is a question of broad interest. We have this subject, how many DDs are enthusiastic about this project? Is this some kind of thing that one person is interested, interested in? Is it something that only one person actually understands within Debian? Then it might not be something that is very good for this project. First, because of the bus factor, and second, because we want uh, all the DD is to be able to interact with the students, the work, the release prod product, and we want, we want it to be used broadly. The one interaction, as I just said, the student in the course of his project has to be able and has to have the need to actually interact with an as wide as possible spectrum of developers within Debian. If it's a project that is only concentrated within one single team, the student will never really get to see what the social aspect of Debian is. 
having to interact with other developers that we don't necessarily work every day with, having to talk with people that we don't know, working with on different subjects, and having to get the help. This is something that we think is very specific to Debian and something that we want to be able to have in a project. On the other hand, these are all restrictions to projects. And something that you have to keep in mind is that there are 175 projects. When the list of projects get published, the, we, we get a giant Zerg rush of students going to this giant list of projects. And they go to everyone and click, to the, click on the ideas list. And so there are like literally hundreds of different projects to choose from. And these are not students that are necessarily captive to Debian. So it's a competition. If we want to get students, we have to propose something that they have to be enthusiastic about. It's the kind of projects that students find exciting are projects that have wide interest within the projects. It's something that uh, in the end create a product that many people will use within the project and outside the project. It's a project that creates skills that they can reuse uh, somewhere else. If it's a project that is about fixing one particular aspect of one particular submodule of one particular software within a project, and this is something really tedious that no one cares about, and that uses an obscure language, it's probably something that is not going to be interesting to the student, even though it might be very like important for the project to get done. It's not something that you're going to attract students with. And finally, the work of, a of the sum of code is, it's an inter interaction between the student and the mentor. The mentor might come with the idea, the student might come with the idea, but most often, the, because the mentor is the person who is the most experienced with, within the project, he often has like, Huge, a huge set of requirements. He has a very firm, firm idea of how it should be done. And we should always leave room for design for the student. It's his project, and we want him to be able to feel a sense of freedom within the project, being able to interact with multiple people, being able to propose ideas, propose ways to do things. And that is something, I think, that creates very exciting projects. And we really need to work hard to attract all of these students. Um, so for, for next year, it starts now, really. Uh, we need to have detailed projects with uh, some objective posted to the wiki. We have to start now because when the deadline comes and we have three days to come up with hundreds, well, at least a few dozen project ideas. It's very hard to come, up, to come up with these ideas on the spot. And all around the year, you're doing things within Debian, and you, you come up with things that you want to do, but you don't have time to do it. Or it's kind of an excursion from what you're currently doing. And maybe it requires something that you don't really know, and maybe some student really knows about it. This really happens. So during the year, keep in mind that during the summer, there are stuff that can get done. And so not jot down what you think you'd like to do, but you don't have time to do, or something that you're passionate about and that you'd like to have a student to interact with and do with you. Uh, you, you really need to start thinking about this now, writing them down. Uh, something that uh, we think about every year is that the Google Sum of Code doesn't really enforce that uh, students, selected students, have to be complete newcomers to the projects. They can be existing uh, developers, and many projects actually use Google Sum of Code as a way to found their, their current developers. 
uh, we at Debian have the position that we accept both, but we would prefer to have newcomers, of course. We want new developers. And if we have both newcomers and existing developers for the same project, we of course have higher requirements for Debian developers because they have, they have already an existing set of skills of contacts within Debian. So the schedule, as I said, uh, organization applications start in March. That's still in quite a while. And the student application starts during the end of March. And within a few weeks, we have to decide these students are going to talk with every single organization. They are going to look at all our projects, uh, ideas lists, uh, and choose some, make applications, usually just a few. And at the end of April, we are going to have the list of students that we're going to select. Uh, then the GSOC goes through the summer with an evaluation at the midterm, which is mid-July, which is just right before, and a final evaluation at the end of August. So really for next year, uh, think about things to propose. The larger the list of ideas we have, the larger the list of exciting ideas we have, the statistically larger proportion of students we can attract to Debian and possibly keep uh, as Debian developer for the future. Thank you. So we're going to accept questions, or if you actually have a project ideas right now, we'd love to hear it. Yes. So I think one question that comes up is, uh, maybe can you explain a little bit about how many projects Google is likely to accept uh, and a little bit about the process of, you know, um, how, how to be successful in proposing projects for Debian? Do you mean from the point of view of the organizations or from the point of view of the students? Uh, so, so there are two applying processes within the Google Sum of Code. First, the organization has to be selected. And last year, 175 organizations have been selected. And we usually get in the range of few hundreds, I think, organizations applying. Uh, most of the big organizations like us get selected every year, as long as we do, don't do anything stupid, which has happened for even for high-profile organizations. Um, Google has a set of criteria for acceptance. Uh, the first one is there has to be room, of course. They have a, they have a defined budget. So I every year they have different set of projects that they accept and that s some smaller uh, medium-profile projects get rotated and there are all kind of uh, different reason why you might get selected or not. Maybe Silvers can tell something about us. Sorry. Tell us more about it because we as Debian haven't really thought to get selected because of we are kind of high profile. But uh, for small so organizations. So you mean you mean uh, basically uh, to explain why he's saying that I'm also an admin for another software which is Scilab. So you are meaning that Scilab is not a major software. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, it's pretty easy. Yeah, in fact, uh, the perception of Scilab outside of the scientific world might be low, but uh, it's a bit software with a lot of references. It, uh, it's three million lines of code, so it hasn't been very hard. Just have to make sure, sure that Google knows that you are a major project uh, in the field you are working. And after that, to answer for one of your questions, um, the number of slots that we are getting is basically an algorithm with the number of mentors we've got and the number of applications we've got. It's basically an algorithm, but um, 
There is a funny part in the Google Summer of Code where you request a number of slots. So basically, last year, we think we request something like eight, and we had eight, something more or less. And uh, there is a funny part where you can exchange slot with other project. So uh, as Scilab, I, I gave some slot to other project uh, in the Debian community, which were not Debian, but uh, you can exchange them. And you can request for more, and you can start to send email crying that, oh, I want more slot, and so on. And usually, it is working. So they are very relaxed with that. Uh, so for, for the point, from the point of view of the students, and the thing is, it takes a lot of effort to make a good application. And most of the students can get one, two, maximum three uh, applications that have quality uh, that is good enough to get selected. Uh, I participated once, the first time in the Google Summer of Code, the year before I became admin. I made two applications, one for Debian and one for uh, Tor. I got selected at both and I chose to go to Debian. Uh, but it really took a very a lot of time to write the applications. The applications itself was in the range of, uh, I think it was like 4,000 4, words. Uh, it was a real outline with schedules and everything. Uh, so most students will do about two, an average of two applications. We have some students that try to do spam applications. Like I said, if you can replace Debian with Fedora and it still makes sense, then we're not interested. So some, uh, some students will write this one application and send it to 10 different organizations. That usually doesn't work. Uh, pretty much for the students interested in participating in Google Summer of Code in Debian next year, around January, beginning of March, they should start looking how Debian works. So in the beginning of March, when there is uh, already the first uh, project, they can select, they can get in contact with the mentor, and they can start working. Because the, how many, two, three weeks they have for submitting the proposal is very little time. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much everybody for coming.